want to save money, not go to the dentist as often, and not have that many fillings in your mouth, then this video is definitely for you. By only brushing, you're cleaning only three out of the five surfaces of each tooth, meaning that when you walk out the bathroom, you're leaving 20% of each tooth still dirty. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you the same advice I give to my patients on a day-to-day -day basis, going through how to floss and use interdental brushes and why they're so important. If you imagine a tooth to have five surfaces, you're missing two of these surfaces by just brushing and not doing anything else. No matter how good your technique is, you're still going to miss these two areas. And it so happens that these two areas are the areas that have the most fillings. So like put two and two together and you realise why it's so important to floss. In my last video we talked about how to go about brushing properly and so adding on to that we're going to be talking about how to floss and use interdental brushes properly as well because believe it or not it's not just an up and down motion there's actually a little bit of technique that goes into it. This is basically what four years of dental school is all about. You need to try and clean these areas at least once a day. I personally do it once at night just because usually I have more time to make sure we're doing it before we brush. Now this is so important because using floss or incidental brushes before you brush dislodges any food, any bacteria, any gunk stuck under your gums and in between your teeth so that when you brush a lot more of it is washed away and also allowing ingredients in your toothpaste to really get in those nooks and crannies protecting our teeth even further. The main excuses that people give me for not flossing is that it's long, it's boring, they don't see the point in it, it hurts their gums, it makes their gums bleed and they just can't get their head around how to do it. So let's dive straight into how to floss step by step. The very first thing we want to do Step one is to wash your hands. You don't want to introduce any new bacteria or viruses into your mouth. Step two, cut off a generous piece of floss. The longer it is, the easier it will be to use. Step three, you want to grab it in between your two index fingers and you want to wrap it until there's about two to three inches between your fingers. You can use your middle fingers and your thumbs to maneuver the floss in place. Step four, you want to gently push the floss in between your teeth. If you're not gentle, you're gonna cause damage to your gums and probably cause them to bleed. Step five, go slightly below your gum line and wrap the floss around the tooth. You want to make sure the floss is pulled taut, scraping all that gunk off. Step six, do the same but for the tooth adjacent to the one you just did because each gap needs to be flossed twice, one for each tooth surface and then repeat this for all of your other teeth. For your lower back teeth it's easier to use both your middle fingers to manipulate and push the floss in between the gaps and allow for you to still wrap the floss around the tooth. It's also easier to swing your jaw slightly to the opposite side that you are flossing so that you can see what you're doing better. It's also helpful not to have your mouth open too wide because that pulls your cheeks taut and makes it harder to get the floss inside your mouth in the first place. Now there are a few alternatives to flossing. Like I've already mentioned, incidental brushes is the main alternative. There's also floss sticks and water floss. So let's talk about how to use interdental brushes. Now with these brushes, the first thing you want to know is what size to use and where to use them because there are different size gaps between each of our teeth. Usually dentists will try all these different sizes and tell you which ones to use where, but obviously during this pandemic, not many people can go to dentists. So what you can do instead, there are loads of kits in any supermarket and any pharmacy that have a range of different sizes so that you can try them out at home yourself. Remember that different colours represent different 
sizes and these may vary between each brand. If your teeth are really close together, it may mean that floss might be the best bet because you might struggle to get a brush in between tighter, smaller areas. On the flip side, if you have really large gaps between your teeth, brushes are probably the way to go. You can get brushes that look like this. That looks like it's gonna be more effective than just using string floss. As a general rule, you want a brush that is slightly tight but not painfully tight. If it's going in and out very, very easily, it's probably too loose and it's not gonna be as effective. You want to push the brush in between your teeth at a 90 degrees angle at garment level. Some say move the brush back and forth a few times and then pull out and others say twist it like a key 180 degrees. Both methods work really well so just see what works for you. It may be difficult to get the little brushes all the way to the back of your teeth but what you can do is either get a brush with a longer hand or some of the brushes including the TP brushes you can add the lid onto the bottom and extend the handle. You can even bend the actual brush so that you have a better angulation. Sometimes you can even add a little bit of toothpaste onto the brush so that you're getting all those protective ingredients in between your teeth. This isn't a necessity, but it's an optional add on. Again, if you're choosing to use these instant brushes, make sure you're using it before you brush, and at least once a day. In fact, some studies have even shown that interdental brushes are more effective than flossing. So, if your gums are bleeding when you are flossing or using incidental brushes, that is not a sign that you're doing it wrong. It usually means that you're missing areas underneath your gums and between your teeth causing inflammation and bleeding, like we spoke about again in our last video. So you are definitely, definitely needing to do this. In fact, once you start doing this on a regular basis, you're gonna notice a significant decrease in both inflammation and bleeding. So just keep at it. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate. Give me a comment down below and I'll make sure to answer it. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.